guest is the founder of style brand Edie Parker. Please welcome Brett Heyman. Hello, hey. Brett. Hey, me. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for being problem. here. I I was checking out all your stuff and I, I love the colors and the sparkles and, and all the whatnots. Um, obviously I like it, David. I'm more of a whatnot guy myself. Yeah. <laughs> so Edie Parker <laughs> is a very distinctive uh, signature style. How would you describe the style and what inspires it? Um, well, I think we're sort of unabashedly feminine and colorful and joyful. Um, our brand tagline and ethos is for a good time. So um, we really believe in destigmatization sort of through packaging and, and brand story. We've been a brand for around 10 years. I, I don't know if you know, but I used to work for Gucci for a long time. Um, so <gasps> we sort of- Can you hook a sister up? <laughs> I mean, kind of, I think I still get a discount. <laughs> so you'll have to let Ooh, me know. Okay, we'll talk later. Okay. Okay. Well, um, so yeah, so we just, we like to speak to, we're a group of all women, we're cannabis for women, by women, and all of the accessories that you're showing on the screen, you're on our, um, this is, I think, our, our heritage brand website, but we also have a flower website with smoking accessories that sort of look like everything you're seeing now, which is to say like really considered, really playful. They're meant to be gifted and received and, and shared and displayed and not hidden away in a drawer. Yeah, I love that. It's amazing. So your merch is obviously super cool, and I'm just gonna say it as a casual observer, not all that cheap. Uh, why would I be better off using some, buying some of your accessories as opposed to like the dumpster behind the Target that I usually shop? <laughs> I mean, kidding. you can shop wherever you want. There's, there's <laughs> certainly no obligation to, to step it up a notch, but. Look, I think there is this, this narrative, which is to say that like, first of all, we have a range of prices. We have rolling papers for $10 and we have bongs for $700. But I think there is something to be said for craftsmanship. Like we don't arbitrarily just come up with prices um, that are expensive. We hand make our, most of our products in America or Italy. We pay people a living wage, they get health insurance. It's not like just like, pumping stuff out of a mold. So some things just cost more to make, but then therefore they last a lot longer. And our brand has started, you know, I started Evie Parker because I collected vintage acrylic clutches from the 50s and 60s. And they're these little modern heirlooms passed down through generations. And they were created in America at a time following World War II, where we were setting fashion trends globally. And sort of the use of plastic was part of that innovation. So we manufacture in very much the same way. And with flour, not all of our accessories are handmade, obviously. But if you want to treat people well and treat workers well, and you have to pay more for goods, and therefore it's just a little bit more for the consumer. I love that because I, I've been in the last, I think I'd say probably like five years, I watched that documentary, True Cost. And it like, I don't know if mm. you've seen it, but it, it was all about I've fast fashion and the, you know, and one of my, and I know we all, you know, it's hard to be conscious about everything because there's like so much information being thrown at us. And, you know, it, it's kind of, it's kind of not the consumer's fault that so many companies are so unethical because it's like, well, you know, if people can't afford expensive goods, but they have, whatever, you get what I'm getting at. But, but what I, I have been trying so hard to shop as much as possible ethically, whether that means vintage or spending like, you know, quality over quantity. And it does feel better to shop brands knowing that the person who made it um, isn't a slave worker in a third world country getting paid jack shit so I can wear a shirt that I wear once and then give to Goodwill and then it ruins the environment. Like I, I still think it's such a, I hope more and more awareness comes out about that aspect of the fashion industry. Cause like, not to name any names cause I don't want to get wowie in trouble, but, like, <laughs> but there's like a couple of brands, you know, you get those Instagram ads and it's like $4 dresses and like- Our uh, Instagrams are wildly different. <laughs> But it's just, it's, I, I want, I'm so I really, I appreciate what you're saying and I'm starting to really appreciate the cost of, you know, 
the ethical cost that goes into creating yeah. stuff. I mean, it's not even just the labor, which is a huge part of it, but it's the wastage. Like when you're getting a dress for $4, it's because they manufactured hundreds of thousands of them and those don't all get sold. So if you want to manu manufacture one thing, you know, if a, an artist is blowing us a bong in Red Hook, Brooklyn, but he's doing four of them, it just takes more time. It costs more money you know, rent is more expensive. It's just, everything trickles down. And so of course I would like things to be some items to be more affordable and I'd love economies of scale, but it's just not, you know, where we live at the moment. Yeah, I agree. Um, so you and I both famously, as everyone knows, have, have daughters. Um, and your company is named after your daughter. Um, and then you have a cannabis line called Edie Parker Flower. So uh, my question for you, I'm not sure how old your daughter is, but does she know about the cannabis aspect of your company? And I guess I, what I'm getting at is, you know, there's a big likelihood that cannabis is going to pay for portion of my daughter's college. So, um, you know, I don't know. What, do you, do you talk to your child about this area of your work or how does, how does that all yeah. unfold? I'm, I mean, I have to shout out. I also have two sons. They, they, they get no attention because okay. I take okay. the company after my daughter. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'll hear about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we talk about cannabis very openly uh, in our house and we've sort of always talked about it. We talk about we talk about it like we enjoy it like alcohol, I would say, you know, we talk about being of a certain age, we talk about enjoying it responsibly with each other, with friends, etc. And then we talk a lot about the criminal justice piece. We talk a lot about the fact that cannabis is a plant. We talk a lot about cannabis as like, you know, how it was used as an excuse to lock up members of uh, brown and black communities. So we, we try to have a lot of teachable moments and just um, show responsible use at home to to give them good habits when they're of age. I love that. Yeah, I'm, I'm all on board. I mean, my child is not even a year and a half, so I feel like by the time she's even <laughs> aware of what mom and dad do in the backyard, <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> it'll be, who knows what the world will right. be like then. Um, it'll it, hopefully better. <laughs> she's and she's grown up in California to this point. So oh yeah, be... I have an LA. Yeah. I'm from the East Coast originally, and I have an LA child. So I don't even. She's gonna be surrounded in crystals and oh, yeah. all sorts of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're also branching out into I'm a little bit wellness in LA. with your so, brand. You're what? Are you an LA kid? Well, I'm both. I was born in New York, but I grew up in LA, so I did collect crystals and a lot of vintage. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, I got into crystals when I was in New York, so it's kind of, but it's just different. Like in New York, when you're getting crystals, you're like taking the train and it's in like a basement. In LA, it's like, I don't know. I feel like people hand them to you in a garden. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that New York pursuit sounds like, it makes it sound like drug. You gotta go to a basement. Yeah, you have to do three three knocks on a door and give a code word. <laughs> We're talking about rocks, right? Um, yeah, like... you're, yeah. <laughs> yeah, rocks, you're buying. <laughs> my husband actually has more crystals than I do. I just want to put that out there. People really? Think, oh yeah, my husband is addicted to crystal. <laughs> crystals, the rock. He got it in a basement. He got uh... it in a basement. <laughs> So you're also branching out into sexual wellness with your brand. Uh, we did kind of do this last week, but talk to us about kind of your philosophy around cannabis in the bedroom. The most exciting place. Yeah. Besides the basement. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I think again, part of our brand ethos is this having a good time. So while we really are into the health and wellness benefits of cannabis, in our office, it's a lot more about just enjoying getting high and enjoying having cannabis for sex. And I think just being a group of women, I mean, when you get together with other ladies, we talk a lot about sex and, and you know, making sex more pleasurable or just, you know, having more sex. So um, the use of cannabis is very often a part of that conversation. And so we just, whether it's eat like our CBD, pre, uh, not CBD, pre, our THC pre-rolls or our sleepover spray that you guys flashed up on the screen. Um, we just think sex, uh, cannabis makes sex better and we want to share the message with as many people as we can. Yeah, I, I appreciate that too, because I do think there's a lot of talk always about like cannabis health benefits. And I, and I know that's part of, I guess, the rollout of making it normalized. 
But I love that you just said, it's also just fun. It's nice to get high. It's fun to get, everything is more fun when you're high. You know what I mean? It's, we talk about going to Target high a lot. Yeah, I go to work high regularly. Yeah, we're at work high all the time. Uh, <laughs> but it does, yeah, and I mean, I've definitely enjoyed sex high. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have you enjoyed this? Case sex? closed. We solved it. Ooh. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. No, but absolutely. But um, yeah, I mean, high just kind of like it. Also, not that it matters, but it it is nice if both of you are high. Yeah. Everyone I partaking. You know what I mean? That's uh, you know, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. And the thing is that I don't think it's talked about enough and I imbibe still, I love alcohol, but alcohol is a desensitizer, right? It like it dulls your sensations and cannabis does the absolute opposite. So this idea that people like get drunk and have sex while super fun, I just feel like more people need to try being high and have sex. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Now, changing topics, kind of, uh, not to be a creep, but I did see pictures of your house on the internet because they do exist and you have a very nice house and I want to know where oh, in your yeah. house do you smoke weed? Is it is it over by the pool? Is it with all those Kate Moss portraits? <laughs> where, where do you like to get stoned in your house? <laughs> so, super creepy that that's there, but yeah, it looks pretty. Um, so as you can see, there's a lot of space outside, so you can smoke anywhere outside. And yeah. in the house, my husband taught me about smoking under the, um, the fan at, in the oven, like, you know, where the, where the oven is putting on the fan and smoking in the kitchen and it goes right up. So if we're inside, that's where we're smoking. And otherwise, oh, you know, yeah. on a porch on some of that grass. That's so smart. What a hot tip. I do that. You do? Yep, there yeah. You go. But you live alone. So I don't always like my house being stank <laughs> up. Wow. Like sometimes it's okay. Like I'll smoke on camera for this, but I don't particularly love like my house smelling. Like yeah. That. And yeah, it shoots it right up to my neighbor. I don't know what's up there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have another picture of your house here <laughs> because this is just going to get weirder and yeah. weirder. We, what are you smoking in this? Oh, well, she doesn't smoke inside, though. Oh, she doesn't smoke inside. She, so you didn't smoke in this room. This would be a great smoking room. Yeah, we had a whole bit where I was going to say, do you smoke bongs in here because of the guitar? Now I've ruined it. What is it's this? Cool. You smoke okay, that joke. you must smoke weed in there. Okay, we definitely <laughs> smoke weed in there. And we built that. My husband's obsessed with bees. So there used to be these honeycombs there um, and it's where we had our bees and we would collect honey, but then the bears started coming. So now I just put chairs there and you can go sit, chill, smoke, look outside. You, when you said the bears, how many? <laughs> <laughs> the how many Chicago bears, all the Chicago bears came. Yeah, um, Mike you know, I, I don't know there. because they're not tacked. <laughs> yeah, Mike Dicka. Oh man, um, in, no, my, I think, in my brain, I just imagined you and a bunch of cute bears like all puffing and passing a joint and then being like... What, what are, you, are you saying bears are like big burly dudes? Oh, I meant like animals, the bear, bears, not the football team and not, it's a gay term, right? Yeah. No, uh, animals. It oh, would be like really grizzly. Cute. Grizzly bears. Like Wally three... does not endorse giving marijuana to animals. We don't, but I'm just saying it would be very food, adorable. Yeah. yeah. To be clear, yeah. there's no grizzly yeah, yeah. bears where I live. They're black bears and they, you know, for the okay. most part, leave you alone. But do not feed them. Do not hotbox with them. Do nothing with them. Just walk away. Be big if you see <laughs> one. And then pack up. Right. You be big and you say... You ain't, you didn't put in on this bear. If there's any if there's anything you can learn from today's episode, it's don't hot box with a bear. Yeah. Or <laughs> box with a bear, really. <laughs> uh, we are So this is like this is this is this is this is What's happening? This is I'm not doing good. Usually there's tech. Usually it's like tech issues. We're not in the same Room, but now you realize that I'm just bad at my job. You're not bad at your job. I'm like six out of ten. It today. did I'll seem like it. I needed to rewind you up and start you up. We reboot you. Yeah, I smell toast. It's uh. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Uh, we are asking everyone. That's what it was. Yeah. That's what it was. We ask it. We like to ask everyone who comes on. What do you think is the number one reason for federal legalization of cannabis? Oh my God, the number one? Um, well, let's see. I would say number one, weed makes people's lives better. But then a close two, three, four, five is that like no one's ever overdosed on cannabis. Um, it's the fastest job creator in the country. It created over $3 billion of tax revenues last year. It has bipartisan support. I think that, you know, uh, weed is more popular than Biden. And yeah, I mean, it also like eliminates the <laughs> excuse to lock up brown and black people for no reason. So I think there's like a, a million reasons that weed should be federally legal. My God, weed is more popular than <laughs> Biden is a whole, you're really, there's so many great tips coming out, but that is yeah. a great, hilarious That's going to go down in Wowie Hall of Fame. Yeah, Wowie Hall of Fame. To be fair, I also think weed was more popular than Trump. I think weed has been more popular than every president. Uh, yeah, I think that's very reasonable. Yeah. Uh, so we have a giveaway. You've been very generous. Um, we have some fantastic Edie Parker products that Wowie told me I am not allowed to keep for myself. But I could. Nope. Uh, and the people at Wowie. Uh, so all you have to do, you have to follow It's Wowie on Instagram, like the post, and tag a friend, and you could win a gift bag containing a smell proof pouch, a dupe tube, and rolling papers. Uh, is there anything you want our viewers to know about this giveaway, about any of the products, any special fun, fun facts? I mean, they're all really beautiful in person. Hard to tell, but like that smell proof pouch is really cool. And the dupe tube feels really nice. The papers are branded and they have like, they're just, it's, it's great stuff. Follow, follow Wowie. I love it. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to push this out there. I would like to win that. Yeah. If anybody, if any of my bosses are watching. You heard how I talked about color. I need it in my life. Yeah, but that's not a shirt. I just want the Gucci discount. That wasn't even up for grabs, Julia. Yeah, but I feel like she and I have something going here where she gets where I'm coming from. I think you want to get for a Gucci discount. Yeah, I'll send you something. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on, guys. You can find her at Edie underscore Parker on Instagram or Edie Parker Flower. Brett, thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you wow so much, today. Brett. Thanks, guys. It was yeah, so nice to meet you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much.